So today we're going to be talking about, I'm going to be showing you three things that you possibly, probably get wrong in the goal swim because I've seen these so, so often. Let's start with the shoulders. And a lot of these are concepts, is just how people think about the goal swing. And if you get any of these incorrect in your goal swing, it is going to be seriously holding you back from playing your best golf. Get all three wrong, and that is definitely something we need to fix. So shoulders, what is the fault with shoulders? Well, you don't, in the back swing, turn your shoulders. So often people say, you turn your shoulders all the way back, but it's incorrect, and we're going to explain why. If I stood upwards, this would be a shoulder turn. It looks fairly normal, and that is a shoulder turn. But when we're in golf posture, that changes everything. If I go into my posture, and you'll see from this face on camera, if I turn my shoulders, just watch what happens to my body shape. Huge upper body shift off the golf ball. My weight has gone almost to the outside of my foot. My head has sh shifted way off the target. And you'll notice that from that down the line camera, my shoulder is relatively level. I'm going to find it incredibly hard to get any kind of backswing position. And the likelihood of me in a good shot from there is just very, very slim, almost zero. So if we don't turn the shoulders, what do we actually do? Well, although this might seem a little complicated, we actually have to turn them and tilt them. And it's all to do with the fact that we are tilted over the golf ball in this way. So, watch what happens when I make this different backswing move. There's my golf posture. Now, from that face on camera, my shoulders are relatively level. Maybe a little bit of tilt, but not a huge amount. When I make my backswing movement, you'll notice that there is now a significant angle in those shoulders. The angle will depend on how tall you are, it will depend on the club that you're using, but everyone should have a tilt through the shoulders. So my lead shoulder has moved down towards the golf ball. My trail shoulder has moved back up and away from the golf ball. And just notice what that's done to my hips and my legs. It's created this pretty good lower body action. This poor move, this rotation, or this turn doesn't really influence my lower body. So if I get my upper body moving incorrectly, it's likely going to create some issues down here in my legs. So we don't turn the shoulders, we tilt the shoulders, which enables me to move my legs better, and it enables me, from that face on, to keep my head really centered. Okay, a really simple drill that you can do to do this, to feel this, and to sense this just at home or in the office, is take an address in your posture, place your arms out to the side, and as we make a backswing movement, your lead hand should start to point down towards the golf ball. As you can see there, now it might not point directly at it, but it's down towards it. There's that tilting motion. The rotation that we're trying to avoid, well, you can see that's very, very different. That puts me in this very level position and, as you said, incredibly difficult from there. So jump up wherever you're watching this, at home, office, or even at the golf course, and just make some little rehearsals like this and just start to feel how that influences your lower body and how it influences what your hips do, what your knees do. If you can do that, you're gonna get into a much better position at the top of the golf swing. So, the first thing you possibly get wrong in the golf swing is that you don't turn the shoulders, you tilt the shoulders. So the second thing that you might well be getting wrong in the golf swing, and again, this is concept, and it's so often what I see from golfers, especially those who are struggling with contact and strike with the irons, weight shift. So common to get this wrong. What I don't want to be doing in my golf swing is intentionally shifting my weight a huge amount in the back swing. What we do is we shift pressure. And the reason we shift pressure is because we're trying to move a golf club at some speed. We're trying to create some force. We're trying to propel that ball within reason as far as we can down the hole. So if I was to set up with my weight 50-50 and I make a backswing super slow and I stop at the top, My weight still feels 50-50, it has not moved. That's correct. That was a slow motion swing, there was no force, there was no speed, there was no energy in the club. My weight hasn't moved. But we hear all too often that we should shift our weight to our back leg in the backswing and our front leg in the downswing. So very often if I ask a golfer to make a backswing and stop, they'll say things like, I haven't shifted my weight, that's where I need to be. Now. I feel all my weight here. But you'll notice that I shift in my legs laterally, I shift in my head laterally, and it's very difficult to get back to the golf ball. 
you are only going to be shifting pressure, which is what we want, when you're making a full speed swing because pressure is there to create the speed. So if I was to make a backswing and a downswing, there is going to be pressure shifting between this leg and this leg, but it's not weight. That's the key message. We're not searching for that idea of I've got to move my weight over onto this leg. Some of the great drivers of the golf ball, someone like a Rory McIlroy, he will be very early in his golf swing shifting a little bit of weight, a little bit of mass, a tiny bit, but he'll actually reverse that in the transition. We're talking here about the golfers who have this excessive move because they're trying to feel like they're moving into this leg, okay? The best little exercise I can give you is one where you set up, you make a backswing rehearsal where you feel like your weight stays nice and centered and you stop, and then you start to add a little bit of speed to that motion. And as you add a little bit of speed to that motion, you should start to get to the point where you can feel like you lift your lead heel. Because as I'm starting to create a movement, a motion, some energy, we start to lose the pressure under this leg, which is why I can start to lift the foot. But I'm not doing this. Okay, the difference is if I lift this foot up, the weight stays here. When we do it correctly and we lift the foot up, we start to fall back towards the target. That's pressure. So don't move your weight, move your pressure. Now, before we move on to number three, the statistics on YouTube tell me that more often than not, the viewers are not subscribed to my channel. More than 90% of you are not subscribed to my channel. It is free, there's no reason not to. So head down there, click that link, and you won't miss another video. Right, on to the third thing that you may well get wrong in your goal swing. So the third thing we're talking about is how we twist the golf club in a golf swing. Now, we're gonna use this little device here just to highlight this. It's a little magnet that's gonna sit onto the golf club. Now, we swing in the golf club, and we've said this in the video, we swing it at, at force, at speed. And when we do that, we've got different torques and forces that we can apply in the golf club. So we've got this one, up and down, we've got this one, and we've also got a twisting motion. Now, there is almost no golfer on the planet who's ever swung a golf club without using those three forces and torques. The one we're specifically talking about is the twist. You will be twisting the golf club in your golf swing. Whether you think about it or not, whether you're trying to or not, you will be twisting it. The best players are twisting it. How we twist it is the big difference. So let's take an address, let's move the club into a takeaway position, and we're not going to move the golf club physically, but we can twist it. And you can see what that does to the club face, and obviously we've got that little reference point on there. One twist points the club down, that's closing it and this twist points it up, that's opening it. And you can see how that's changing my wrist position. Now, very often when we see the twist go wrong is in the transition, backswing to downswing. Why is that the case? Well, often we're going back and then we're applying a fair bit of force to the golf club. So it's really common in that transition phase to see a golfer twist the golf club the wrong way and it leaves the face way, way open. When we say open, we mean at this point in the downswing, the club face is pointing upwards towards the sky. When we look at the best players, we'll see something where the club face is pointing a little bit more down towards the ground. Not by a huge amount, granted, but slightly down towards the ground. And again, you can see how that's different in my lead wrist. Now, what we tend to see from the best players is they will apply the opposite twist. You can see how that club face starts to point more up towards the sky versus down towards the ground. Up is correct, down is incorrect. Now, when we can measure the best players, we know they're doing this. Do they think about it? Are they trying to do it? Probably not. It's just the way that they've naturally swung the golf club. Unfortunately, you're going to be in two camps. You're going to be the golfer who naturally twists this way. If that's you, you're probably not watching this video because you're probably on tour. And if you twist it this way, then that's probably you watching this video because you're struggling. It's what we do naturally, but we have to change it. So something like this is great, a T bit of blue tack on the club face, that would work just as well. And what we really want you to try and do is feel like in that transition phase, you're twisting so that the club points downwards sooner. Not that, this is what you want. Avoid this, work towards this. So as we go up, we twist. We go up and we twist. Now, the key thing here is that, as we did in that first demonstration, I'm trying to only influence this movement. Because watch what happens if I get to the top 
and I use one of my other movements I've got available to me. Club face points down, that's what we want. But it isn't, you can see I've used one of those other movements. So it's really common when we talk in a club face to see a golfer using a different movement to influence where that club face points. Try to isolate just the twist. You can see I can do that there. So this, one of the best little exercises you can do is to get the club pointing down to the ground fairly soon in the golf swing. Obviously I can't hit a ball with that on. Take it away and then we can introduce the ball. So we take an address, we make one motion up and down with a twist. And then we can go clip it off the tee peg. So, really important message here that you might be thinking, I've never considered the twist. You will have to, unfortunately, because we will always twist the golf club in the golf swing. We just want to make sure we're avoiding the poor one and working towards the correct one. So three things you possibly, probably get wrong in the golf swing, but fix them and you're definitely going to be well on your way to some better golf.